Hello and welcome. Jim Schweitzer. I'm giving a paper here now, or a poster paper. It should have happened at the regular IPS meeting called Zero to 60 Million Light Years in Six Minutes. Um, earlier this year, I obtained a new telescope. It's called an EV scope. And uh, here I am, actually in my back alley, observing with this small telescope. And to the right is a typical image I might get with this telescope. And I believe this type of electronic telescope, it's electronically enhanced, electronically pointed, electronically operated, represents a sea change in the way uh, we might use telescopes in education and outreach and star parties and similar things. That's why I decided this would be good to show at the IPS, uh, show with my IPS colleagues. Well, EV scope uh, is made by Unistar, it's shown on the left here, it actually has an eyepiece, the small Newtonian telescope, about four and a half inches in aperture, that because of the electronic imaging and the electronic processing of images has the effect of essentially operating as if it were a one meter Dobsonian uh, with a half degree field. So you can imagine the difficulty of having a half meter Dobsonian as opposed to this smaller telescope. For the tech heads out there, let me just mention a little bit about what's under the hood of the EV scope. Uh, it, first of all, it's a four and a half inch Newtonian, a uh, simple reflector. Uh, the focal length is F4, and this gives you about a 25 minute field of view uh, on a, a CMOS sensor at the, it's actually at the focal point of the telescope. The resolution turns out to be about 1.7 arc seconds, uh, pixels, and they're in full color, okay? It has autonomous field detection, and a database and tracking. So you basically point it to the sky, it figures out where it's going, and then it tracks from its LTS mount. In an enhancement mode, it can stack three second exposures essentially indefinitely. That's where really great power comes in. The magnitude limit that I've determined, at least for me, it's about 16th magnitude or so, but it can go to 18th magnitude, maybe for a dark site. Here's an example of some of the images uh, that, that I've taken with the EV scope, uh, you know, from nebulae, Orion's easy, galaxies aren't too hard, uh, even supernovas and galaxies, Comet Atlas was a relatively easy Thing to see as well. Here's some more recent pictures of things people have done, and uh, not for me, but just to show it here. Here's the, the recent comet image on the 9th of July from France, uh, what it looks like in the EV scope. And on the right, I thought very interesting, a, uh, there's an EV scope in the back, but here's a father and his son looking at an iPad, a view of what the scope is putting out at a socially distanced star party in uh, Virginia. So what's it like to really observe with an EV scope? Uh, let me give you a, a run through the list here of the sorts of things to consider. First of all, the whole thing weighs 19 pounds. Uh, it's very, very lightweight. It can fit in a backpack. You can take it almost anywhere. Uh, it is controlled by a smartphone. Here's what it looks like on your phone. It's an image uh, that through the sensors on the top and your controls are basically on the bottom. Uh, the setup and alignment is really quite straightforward. You point it at the sky uh, and, you, and it will find out where it's at. You can then focus it uh, if you like or do other alignments. You can make a, a, a dark frame, usually is a good sort of thing to do. All this happens pretty straightforwardly with the EV scope. Finding objects and tracking is easy. You can put the coordinates in or there's actual database uh, of objects and things you can look at. And then once you've landed on an object, in this case N51, I'll show you what it's like to, to actually observe uh, over about, I think about 13 minutes, 20 minutes here, I'm sorry. Uh, the image will stacking goes on and you can just simply watch on your phone. So this is essentially 20 minutes or so uh, compressed into just a few seconds here and gradually, and this is even from my Oak Park skies just near down to, near Chicago. Uh, where the signals and noise will continue to improve. I can digitally zoom. You'll see I do that in and out several times during this to just check how I'm doing. But this is how it improves over the phase space of 17 or, or 20 minutes. 
So and in a darker sky, it would be that much better. This is actually what you see looking through the eyepiece. Uh, the eyepiece does a pretty good job. And you can, do, of course, digitally zoom like I'm showing here. Uh, sharing of the image is really quite easy because it's digital image from the start. And you can also post process the images pretty easily as well. Uh, here's an example of that same image, 15 minute exposure. Uh, when I put it through Lightroom for, for just a couple minutes, this is uh, what it can look like. So this can all be done in minutes and really shared in a live viewing session. So it has tremendous potential uh, for easy access to very, very interesting astronomy. In fact, if it's dark out and clear, there's really always something to see from virtually anywhere. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So these things are quick and easy. It's not just like the moon or planets or an occasional comet. You always have things to look at. So what are some of the educational opportunities? I think I'll go through some of those and then um, talk about some other things uh, that I've been doing personally as well. First of all, it's easy to use and observe deep space objects with this thing. Uh, you, it makes great digital images in real time. You don't need extra computers and this, that, and the other thing. And it opens many, many new program possibilities. In addition, uh, the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California is uh, supporting many interesting citizen science projects. So you can collaborate with many others. But it has challenges as well, okay? The first one is it's not optimized for the moon and planets. It does pretty well. You can see the moon, you can see the planets and their moons. Uh, but if you really wanna get those done well, you might wanna try a slightly different telescope. They're not particularly cheap. EV scope is $29.99 although there's a discount going on recently. Uh, it's, but a similarly capable schmidt cassegrain telescope and camera and computer would be compatibly, uh, comparably expensive. There's another similar telescope called the Stellina, which is about $1,000 more. Uh, the other thing was, in terms of educational challenges, it requires interpretation. You, 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 you just can't, uh, look at galactic and deep space objects uh, and, and interpret them as quickly as planets. So that needs to be taken into account. Let me just show you briefly some of the projects I've been working on. One, I received my telescope just as the, the coronavirus lockdown was happening. So I've done this imaging project from home. Where I've, uh, I call it Mount Richardson Observatory. I've done 66 dispatches over four months time with the same telescope with that much content. I could get easily from my backyard. It's on my Facebook feed and you can, under the hashtag MR Observatory, uh, you might wanna check out that. That's one of the things I've been doing. Uh, coordinated by Unistellar, the company that makes the telescope, they put together law, beginning of July, uh, 11 observers from around the world, from uh, Reunion Island off of the east coast of Africa, all the way to, to Los Angeles. And we observed objects in real time and uh, did a program. This is what my program slides look like in the end with the, the observational eyepiece view on the left. And then I felt with, with people I was talking to, I needed to uh, relate other information about these objects to people who didn't know what they were looking at. And the most recent thing I can uh, talk about is that I imaged Pluto it, from the backyard. While people were looking at the comet, I couldn't really see it given my horizon, but at the tip of that arrow, you'll see Pluto. I did it in a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with a friend who was looking at a finding chart at, in, his, in his office with his computer, and I was on the telescope. I then verified the image with a, a colleague in Oregon who three days later had taken a picture, and uh, we were able to verify this. So you can actually see Pluto with this telescope. The SETI uh, Institute is doing many citizen science projects. Uh, some involve using the telescopes to observe planet trans transits, it does it pretty well, and also to observe uh, the occultations of uh, uh, transits of asteroids. I actually helped with one of those. So this thing has tremendous potential for education and many other things. A colleague and I have started what we call Electronic Telescopes for Education Outreach Group, or ETEO. If you're interested in that, um, Send me an email if you have any other questions. I'd be thrilled to address them. Take care.